Hi ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams again with another fascinating statistics vi video. This morning we're going to deal with Chebyshev's theorem and non-normal distributions. Because let's face it, not everything in life is normal and data is certainly one of those things. So oftentimes we collect data, plot it on a curve, and what we find out is that we cannot make the assumption of normal distribution. So hopefully after this brief video, although you may not be able to pronounce this guy's name, you'll at least be able to apply his theorem when you are given a non-normal distribution. Let's see how this thing works. All right, here's the highly technical part of the video. Chebyshev's theorem is simply one minus one over k squared. K is simply the number of standard deviations from the mean where we will locate our data. And the one rule is, is k has to be a number greater than one. It doesn't have to be a whole number, but it has to be at least one or larger. And as long as k is one, is larger than one, what we know is that within k, that unknown number of standard deviations from the mean, we will have at least one minus one over k squared percentage or proportion of the data in a non-normal distribution. It sounds very official and very technical, but the mechanics of it are much easier than pronouncing his name or looking at this formula. So let's see how it works. Okay, so if I've collected data and I've plotted it, and instead of that lovely mound bell-shaped curve, I get this curve that looks somewhat like the Andes or maybe the Appalachian Mountains. And I want to find out 80% of the data in this distribution is going to fall how many standard deviations from the mean. Well, I automatically know because it's non-normal that the empirical rule is out. So I'm kind of toast as far as that goes. So what I have to do, because I'm non-normal, is I have to apply Chebyshev's theorem that says, well, 80% of the data in a non-normal distribution will fall k standard deviations from the mean. Let's see how this math works. All right, going back to what the theorem says, it basically tells us that the percentage, in this case we want to know 80%, where 80% of the data will, will fall, 80% of the data will fall 1 minus 1 over k squared standard deviations from the mean, where k is the number of standard deviations. So now what this becomes is an algebra problem, where I have to solve for k or the number of standard deviations from the mean. So I'm going to work through the math to do this. All right, so what I've done is I've isolated my 1 over k squared on the right-hand side of the equation, and I have moved my 0 0.80 over. All I simply did was I subtracted 0 0.80 from both sides, and I added 1 over k squared to both sides. So that was how I ended up over here. Now I'm going to simplify this a little bit. And now I am down to 0 0.20 equals 1 over k squared, because that just came right there. Now I've got to get this k squared out of the bottom, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by k squared, and this is what I end up with. So now by multiplying both sides by k squared, I end up with 0 0.20 equals k squared. And now I'm simply going to solve for getting rid of this 0 0.20 on each side. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.20 in order to isolate this k squared on the left-hand side of the equation. Now that I've done that, I divided both sides by 0 0.20, and the last time I checked, 1 divided by 0 0.20, whoops, how did that get to be a 10? Got a little carried away there. Two point 1 divided by 0 0.20 gave me 5, k squared equals 5, 
But remember, what I need to know is the value of k, or the number of standard deviations that contain 80% of the data in a non-normal distribution. So I'm now going to take the square root of both sides of the equation and give you the magic answer for k. All right, so through the magic of my calculator, I've simply taken the square root of both sides, which is right here, and I end up with k equals the square root of 5, so k equals 2.236. What that tells me is that 80% of the data in a non-normal distribution will fall plus and minus 2.236 standard deviations from the mean. So, on this side, I have a plus 2. Point, I'm so bad at writing this. 2.236. And on this side, because remember this is the lower half of the curve, and I'm going below the mean, it's minus 2.236 standard deviations from the mean. And all that simply tells me is that between this point on the curve and this point on the curve with non-normal distribution, that in between here will contain approximately 80% of my data. So if I wanted to attach some numbers to that, if I wanted to attach some numbers to that, now I know that 80% of my data falls plus or minus 2.236 standard deviations from the mean. I can actually use it to draw some kind of conclusion and get myself a little bit more information about my non-normal curve. So let's say that the uh, curve, the non-normal curve I have here is the mean or the average and is plotted uh, the average cost of uh, luxury automobiles and I've gone out and I've collected my data and I've determined that the mean is $36,000 and my data has a standard deviation of $4,000 but when I plotted it I got this nasty looking curve and my client or whoever's interested in this data wants to know <laughs> how much 80% of my luxury vehicles cost so, now that I have solved using Chevy Chev's theorem, I know that 80% of my data is going to fall plus or minus 2.236 standard deviations from the mean. From this point forward, we deal, it, deal with it exactly like the empirical rule. No big difference. So remember, we already said that 80% of our data is going to fall plus or minus 2.236 standard deviations from the mean, which is what I have right here. Mu plus or minus 2.236 standard deviations from the mean will contain 80% of my data. Well, my mean is 36,000. My standard deviation is 4,000. So I'm simply now going to substitute in the values for those variables and be able to attach a number here and here based on non-normal distribution and a mean of 36,000 with a standard deviation of 4,000. So this is what I look like when I substitute in. Remember the mean plus or minus my 2.236 standard deviations from the mean each standard deviation is worth $4,000, so I've substituted that in right there. And now let me go grab my calculator and I'll tell you what the answer is. All right, what I've done is I've simply taken 2.236, which is the number of standard deviations I'm going to move above and below the mean. Each standard deviation is worth $4,000, so I'm now going to take $36,000 plus or minus this $8,944, and I'm going to put the plus value here, put the minus value here, and even though I have non-normal distribution, I'm going to be able to say that 80% of the price of mid-sized luxury automobiles 
based on this distribution fall between the values of, drum roll please, so now that I've done that, what I've seen, and all I've simply done, take my 36,000 plus or minus my 2.236 standard deviations from the mean, and I can now say that 80% of the price of these mid-size luxury vehicles are, will fall between $44,944, $27,056, even though I have non-normal distribution by applying Chevy Chev's theorem. So let me show you another way that you can work with this theorem to give you information about your non-normal distribution. All right, here's another application of Chevy Chev's theorem. We've done some research and we found that the amount that a student spends on textbooks is not normally distributed, which we all know. But what we do know is it has a mean of $419 and the data when calculated gave us a standard deviation of $27. I'm trying to draw some conclusions or make a decision about maybe student loans or stipends for books. And I want to know what percentage of students will spend between will spend between this $359 and this $479. Well, I can't apply the empirical rule because this is not this is ugly. I mean I've got this big dip here and a big hump here. And because it says not normally distributed, the only way we can determine it is by using and applying Chevy Chev's theorem. So when I have the end values, right, I have the end values, I have the mean, I have the standard deviation, but I want the percentage, then what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to work Chevy Chev's theorem backwards. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. All right, first of all, I'm going to use what I know. And what I know is that between the mean of $419 and $479, that's 60 bucks, isn't it? And I know that between $359 and $419 is another $60. So each of the endpoints of $359 and $479 is a distance of $60 from the mean. Well, now what I can find out is how many were the quantity of standard deviations that it took me to get from this point to this point. I know how far I traveled, but remember my standard deviation is $27. So how many of those $27 standard deviations did I have to move one at a time for me to get from 419 to 479 how many steps uh, 27 dollars a piece did i have to take to the left to go from 419 down to 359. what i find out is that if i moved 60 dollars from the mean of 419 to 479 and I move one standard deviation at a time, in order to travel $60 up and down the curve, $27 at a time, I moved 2.22 standard deviations to the right and 2.22 standard deviations to the left. Well, isn't the number of standard deviations from the mean in a non-normal distribution K? Yeah, it is. So now I know that K equals 2.22. So I have moved K, or 2.22 standard deviations from the mean. Well, if I go back to Chevy Chev's theorem, then I know that a given percentage of the data falls plus or minus K standard deviations from the mean. I now know that K is equal to 2.22. So now look what happens. Because remember, Chevy Chev is just telling us that the proportion or percentage of data that falls within a range on the curve is 1 minus 
1 over k squared. And we just said k is equal to 2.22. So all I've got to do now is substitute this 2.22 standard deviations from the mean for k and solve. And it'll tell me with a non-normal distribution what percentage of students spent between $359 and $479 on books. All right, I've just gone ahead and I've squared 2.22 and I've gotten 4.9284. So I'm going to do this part of my formula first and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to subtract it from 1 and this is what I'm going to get. So once I did my little bit of math over here, I came out with 1 minus 0 0.2029, which gave me 0 0.7971, which tells me, because remember, I'm looking for a percentage or a proportion, so you can multiply it by 100, or you can simply move your decimal point, and now what you know is that the proportion of students, or percentage of students, who spend between $359 and $479 on books in this non-normal distribution with a mean of $419, the standard de deviation of $27 is 79.71%. So like I said, what we know based on and applying Chebyshev's theorem is that 79 0.71% of our students in this non-normal distribution will spend between $479 and $359 on books because as long as we knew how far it was from the mean to our point on the curve and we had a value of our standard deviation, all we had to do was to determine how many steps or how many Ks how many K's we moved and then plug it back into Chevy Chev's theorem. So um, there is one more way that we can solve these and I'm going to show you that one and then you'll be done. All right, last but not least, we've done, we've collected data and of course it's not normally distributed because that's the way things are working today. But what I do know is that the length of time that it takes to a student to get to school beyond not being normally distributed, it does have a mean time of 28 minutes. So the average length of travel time is 28 minutes. I also know that it takes 77% of the students between 24 minutes on the low side and 32 minutes on the high side to get to school. $64,000 question, what's the value of the standard deviation? Let me show you how you can determine the value of the standard deviation. Remember how we did it on that other problem was I said, in that case, I knew, I didn't know these values up here, but I knew how big the steps were that I took. Well, here I have just the opposite problem. I know where I end up I know where I end up, but I'm not sure how big my steps were, my standard deviation. What I do know is that between the mean of 28 and 32 is 4 minutes. And I know between the 24 and 28 is another 4 minutes. So I know that 77% of the values lie between 24 and 32, or plus or minus four minutes from the mean. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. Because what I have when I look at Chevy Chev's theorem is I don't have the value or the I don't have a number of K because I don't know how big each K is, but what I do know is I know the percentage that falls some unknown quantity of standard deviations for the mean. So I'm going to use what I know, and I'm going to plug in this 77% from here, and now I'm going to solve for K. The way I'm going to solve for K is the same way I did before. I'm going to multiply both sides by K squared to get it up here, 
and I'm going to take a square root. I'm going to do something, blah, blah, blah. Let me show you what it looks like. So what I've done is I've just kind of cranked through the math. I know that over here that I've got 77% of the data falls 1 minus 1 over that unknown quantity of standard deviations, k squared from the mean. And so what I've got to do now is I've got to go through and I've got to solve for k. So I'm isolating my term. I'm going to subtract here. End up with 1 over k squared equals 0.23. Going to get that k squared out of the bottom by multiplying both sides. So I end up with 1 equals 0.23k squared. I'm going to divide both sides by 0.23. End up with 4.34 equals k squared. <clears throat> but remember, I'm looking for the value of k. I'm going to take the square root of 4.34 to get to k which means k equals 2.085. Some of you may have been able to do this in fewer steps. I just showed you every possible step so that you could see how I got to the math. Now, I know what k, I know how many, I know how many standard deviations I moved to get from 28 up to 32 and from 28 down to 24 right here is located 2.08, whoops, come on, five standard deviations. Well, if I had to move 2.085 standard deviations, and when I moved that 2.085 standard deviations from the mean, I only moved four minutes. So it took me 2.085 standard deviations to go four minutes, then if I divide that four minutes by how many standard deviations it took me to get there, it should give me the value of the standard deviation. Remember, I just said that I moved four minutes and it took me 2.085 standard deviations to move those four minutes. Now I'm just going to solve for the value of the standard deviation. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm simply going to take that 2.085. I'm going to divide that four and I'm going to get a value of the standard deviation for the travel time to school of 1.0 nine one eight because if I know that it took me two point zero eight five standard deviations to get from twenty eight to thirty two minutes and based on Chebyshev's theorem it said that seventy seven percent of the values will fall plus or minus two point oh eight five standard deviations from the mean if I know that two point oh eight five standard deviations accounts for four minutes in this distribution, then I can simply use this to solve for the value of the standard deviation by taking the distance I traveled by the quantity of standard deviations I traveled to come up with the value for the individual standard deviations in the distribution. All right, so all I can say at the end of this is normal curve is a happy thing. Um, hope that this makes more sense. All I can tell you is that I hope that all that your distributions are normal. See you around. Bye.